talk about a perfect day to do car maintenance. E39 source welcome. Ryan Schultz behind the camera, 2005 in front of the camera. Different style video today, not a DIY, not a tutorial, not a whatever we've usually done. Kind of just a little video, something to watch if, uh, if you're at all interested. So I think the last video I did was the wheel center caps. They're holding up well, if I can say that about wheel center caps. But today we're going to be doing oil. It's been 5,200 miles since my last oil change in March. It's now August 14th, I want to say, uh, in the big box there from Turner. I think I got nine quarts the engine takes, I want to say seven or so, 6.9. Uh, I like to keep some on hand. Being an M5, it does use a quart every 300 to 700 miles, totally depending on climate and how it's driven. I have a breaker bar. I have a torque wrench. I have various sockets, 10 through 13 millimeters. I think the uh, drain bolts are 13. Uh, the black box, I have more sockets and adapters and wrenches. I have a screwdriver to get the little door off the belly pan. The tire compressor, we're going to check some tire pressure while we're doing this. Ramps and the filter hopefully is in there from Turner. So I'm going to get started. We'll kind of film some of the process today. Um, again, I, I have a DIY on the channel if you're looking for something more professional. But this video is actually going to go on for possibly a few weeks detailing the car maintenance that I'm doing. Uh, I plan on doing the chain tensioner, similar to what Andrew did in the front of his car. And I have a few noises that I want to have diagnosed. I have a creaking noise in the front steering, something in the rack. Um, I'm thinking it could be the tie rods or bushings in the tie rods. I talked to the dealer today. Today's Wednesday. I made an appointment for next Monday. Probably film part of that drive down there, see what they have at the dealership. But it's going to be a nice car maintenance video today, almost vlog style. Hope you guys enjoy. Leave me comments. Okay, the, probably the hardest part of this job is done. Um, purely for my records, actually. Mileage of the current uh, mileage of the car right now on August the 14th is 177.855, and there's my oil service indicator. I forget how to read that. Does it need to be replaced when it gets to red? I should look that up. But uh, that's what that looks like. Last time it was done would have been. 5,200 miles ago, as I said, in March. So we're doing an oil and a filter. Also at Dave Walter today, I ordered some of the uh, the screws and acceptors that hold up the, uh, the belly pan underneath the car. On this side, passenger side, where the belly pan screws into the, uh, the, the brake ducting behind the front bumper here, you can see the heat shielding back there. Uh, I don't have screws for that. It's held in with bolts, nuts, and washers. It's not the way it's supposed to be. It takes forever to take down if I need to take it down. So I ordered those screws and we'll be doing that right when those parts come in later this week or next week. If anybody is referencing this and uh, looking for part numbers or DIY stuff, uh, an E39 M5 S62 engine found in the E39 M5 and the E52 Z8 uses Kestrel TW or 10W60 synthetic. So you're going to need 6.9 quarts of that and your filter. I got this stuff from Turner Motorsport. Order total was 152, I think. There's your part OX1521D oil filter. Should come with the uh, copper washer in there for the drain bolt as well. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine quarts. About seven of which we'll be using today. Well, it did feel like I was forgetting something. And that something's fairly important. Something to drain around seven quarts of oil in. So I'm going to get under there, peel that trap door down, take the bolt out, and uh, should probably remove the filter first. I've got the cap and the uh, dipstick out. And the engine's warm. You can see it's still steaming a little bit there. So it should come out pretty quickly, and it's going to be hot. Okay, it's barely dripping now. I guess I'll let it keep going until it's done. Filter's out. Um, here's the old filter after 5,200 miles. I don't know what the recommended service is. The car didn't tell me to do it, so the car would have been content with keeping going. I know some people say 3,000 miles, some people say 15,000 miles, so 5,200 is probably on the low side of things. Here's what things look like in there. I'll flip the light on for the next clip. I don't think that actually does too much. We get down there, take a little peek. Good news, bad news, anybody know how to read that? I don't know. Looks fairly clean to me. Okay, there's what the car took. Six quarts. There's what I didn't use. Three, actually liters, not quarts. 
Uh, and it's right halfway up the dipstick right now. So I haven't started it yet. I'll start it, let it run, back it down off the ramps here, check the level, do a test drive, check the level, probably have to top it off a little bit. And uh, then we're going to be done with the oil job. Well, guys, welcome back to this video. It's actually been maybe a week since I filmed the oil's done. I'm actually stuck in traffic right now behind that hideous thing up there. I think it's a school bus. Um, I don't know that you're going to be able to hear the uh, the creaking that I'm talking about in the steering. It's hot right now. It's 88 degrees. I've been driving the car maybe 20 minutes to get back home. Um, low speeds, low steering adjustments. There's quite a bit of creaking in the front of the car. It sounds like a, an old ship down in the hall at, at, out, on, uh, out on the sea. Anyhow, I did have uh, the issues diagnosed at Dave Walter BMW, Akron, Ohio, um, Monday. Today's Thursday. I, uh, I didn't actually film anything in the dealer. Um, went down with a friend of mine, so maybe I'll film when I'm in there having the parts that I bought installed. Uh, let me just say, I was really impressed with um, the way I was treated at the dealer. The customer service was incredible. They actually took me back into the uh, back into the garage. They had my car up on the rack, showed me um, the mechanic, Tim, great guy. Um, Holtz went out to, uh, to each front wheel and he can move the front wheel side to side about an inch. Um, they diagnosed the, the noises and I guess some looseness in steering that I haven't noticed in needing new front lower control arms, all three tie rods, and the idler arm. They quoted me a ridiculous amount for parts, about $2,200 for all parts and labor. Uh, I neglected that and I bought the parts online. They're going to be installed within the next week. I'm going to do what I can, uh, let you hear just for a little diagnosis. Maybe we'll hear something. probably hearing more of the tires rubbing against the concrete. Actually kill the engine here. Maybe if I, sometimes you can hear if you push on the front of the car, you can hear those pieces move a little bit. Hear that? Mm -hmm. Definitely tie rods, lower control arms, the bushings, the idler arm in there. All of those parts are original. There's quite a bit of play in the steering wheel. I. I have that, you hear that? Yep, that's my issue. Sorry for the camera work here. Regardless, that's part one. Part two was the noise in my steering, which I'm attributing to air in the power steering fluid. Um, mechanic agreed with me. They're gonna do a full flush, it'll be an hour's labor. I am gonna pick up the fluid myself. The mechanics are so awesome that they recommended to me that I buy parts online to save money, bring them in, and they'll install them. They're the same part numbers, they're OEM parts, Turner Motorsport and ECS tuning. Um, I'll provide part numbers and show you what I purchased at a, at a later date. Um, and they're more than happy to put them in for me, just charging for labor. So it looks like the whole job is going to be around $1,400 to fix all the steering issues. That'll totally tighten up the front suspension uh, and get rid of all the noises and, uh, and play that I do have. In total, I would say the dealer had the car back there for about an hour up on the rack, did diagnose the issues for me. Parts have been ordered. They'll be in. I'll make the appointment. We'll take it and have it done. And the next clips will be detailing the parts that I bought. Um, we'll probably talk about prices where we got them. And, uh, and then we'll do our little test drive afterwards and see if, uh, if everything feels better and see if those noises go away. Night has fallen. We're going to take a little bit of a break from talking about the uh, steering and suspension components. I'm actually going to do a little bit of an install job. It's Actually, I'm pulling a Colt here, the way he kind of does things on the 540, working in the middle of the night. It's almost midnight, but I'm feeling productive, so I want to get this stuff done. Um, here I have five screws and five acceptors for the underneath uh, belly pan on the car. I had mine replaced along with the front bumper in June 2011. And uh, since then, for some reason, whoever put it on didn't use some of the right screws. So I have a uh, various array of nuts and bolts in there that do the job and hold the piece up, but it's so difficult to take apart. So there's the receptors that uh, clip on to various parts of brake shielding or actual bumper or parts like that. And then there's the screws. These screws only turn maybe a half a turn. And I wish that the part number were still on there so I could get that for you, but I'm sure that ECS would have them. I got these from Dave Walter, five of these, my dealer, five of these and five of these were $30. So it's a little pricey. You could probably find them online for cheaper if you were on a budget or smart. There's your part number for the receptors. So you could probably find what you're looking for from that. But the reason I've been putting this off, I've had those for maybe a week now is uh, getting under there and working under there is not a fun job. 
wish this iPhone would focus for me. I'm going to have to put the car up on the ramps again, lay down under there with a light now since I'm choosing to do it in the middle of the night. Um, the three that I'm missing, I'm missing three, I ordered two just for extras, two more. Uh, the three that hold the belly pan up to the uh, the brake ducting under here. So I'll show you in a minute once I get the car up off the ground. Excuse my messy garage, but this is what I have to look forward to while working in my garage in the middle of the night. Look at that thing. Are you kidding me? That is ridiculous. All right, here's my setup. Have the car up on the uh, the ramps with the wheels turned mainly so I can get in here to see the inner fender liner bolts. Since my uh, center belly pan isn't held up correctly, I actually have to take this, uh, this fender liner out. That's the one that has the temperature sensor, the one on the outside uh, edge. So there's those two bolts there, and then there's a uh, rivet thing that kind of pries out right there, a couple screws underneath, and then that drops down. Here's the tools. I've got a very bright light. I may even say it's Hella bright. <clears throat> Have a breaker bar, probably won't need that. Screwdriver with bits, bunch of sockets here, 8 to 13 millimeters, various extensions and adapters and whatnot. So I'm going to get started. We're in about an hour. It's been really, really tight working under here. Some of you guys wonder why I pay dealers to do uh, suspension stuff. Well, this is as much room as I get, about 14 inches. I don't have the tools, the hardware. I can't really get under here too well, but we're going to try. For the purposes of this video, this here, that heat shielding material, is the uh, the brake duct here. You can see in there it takes air from behind the bumper and filters it, well, into an M5, into a solid plastic fender liner here. Um, some other 5 Series actually had inlets that would cool the brakes. The M5 does not. Here are the holders I'm talking about. Came works terrible. This is on the bottom of the belly pan. There's one, two, the third one is right there. Those are the screws that I bought. The acceptors go on the other side and hold it up. So that's the first one. There is the second one with the acceptor in place. And looking for the third on camera right there. It's really messy under here. That piece is pretty rusty. Oh, just dirty, dirty Ohio car. So, that's now held up very well. I'm going to put this side back together. Let me crawl out from under the car here. This side's going back together. Uh, the fender liner is right there. I'm going to put that back in, get the temperature sensor back plugged in. My lens must be filthy. All right, we're actually better focused now, but I'm going to get all this back together and then go on the other side, look around, and uh, make sure everything's nice and tight over there too. Good morning. It's Friday the 30th of August now. Today's the day the car goes in for all of this. These are the parts that came. In here, you'll find the tie rods. Both outer tie rods look like that. They have these little plastic things on them. Bushing should be in there. That's, of course, the other tie rod. That's the center link. Center tie rod, it's huge. You can see how big that box is. I have them sitting in the dust over here. Here's what I got for the um, power steering fluid. Royal Purple Max ATF. I had to drive down to Summit Racing to get that $14.91 a piece, I think, per quart. These are the control arms. They're pretty light since they're aluminum. All of these parts came from Turner, although the center or the um, the steering idler arm here came from ECS Tuning. So all that's going in tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. I set up an alignment for tomorrow evening at six o'clock in town since we're gonna have new suspension parts. Probably film a little bit at Dave Walter, my local dealership in Akron, Ohio. Um, Probably have the car about six hours. We'll review some billing and paperwork, take it for a test drive, get that alignment done, and I'll let you know how this whole process goes. I'll talk to you guys in the morning. It's 20 to 9. Good morning. Welcome to Friday. We've got everything in the back of the M5 now. Kenan's bringing the 525 down, convoy down with me a little bit. It's like Timmy Fest all over again. But uh, I'm going to go down and drop this off for the day. I've got my spare key, so I get to keep my house keys and such. Filling it up with gas now, and I will keep you posted throughout the day. Got three M cars in there, an M5, an M6, and an E36 M3, which I can't really see. <laughs> it's an M6 Grand Coupe. 
say hello to the source. Hello. When's your next video coming? Uh, soon. Really Good. Soon. Well, I'll work on that. <laughs> Let's see, we got a $135,000 M6 Grand Coupe here. Damn it, that's a video clip. It has been a very busy week. Had the car in last Friday. Turned out they needed it Friday night into Saturday. Very cool. The dealer was awesome. Told me that uh, it would be parked inside. It was actually, my uh, representative told me it was next to a red E36 M3. So that was nice to know. Um, so they had the car uh, all day Friday into Saturday. I got the car back late Saturday morning, maybe 11 o'clock. Total labor was just about $1,000. I do have a CCA discount uh, being a CCA member now, as you can see. Um, so you know what they did? Uh, you know what the labor was? Parts total, I believe, was about $700. So we're looking at $1,700 to do all three tie rods, uh, the control arms, the idler arm, and a power steering system flush with uh, Max uh, or uh, Royal Purple Max ATF. So all of that has been completed. Now, noises completely gone. The entire car feels tighter, more responsive, more, not responsive, more accurate in steering and suspension handling. I had BMW do a four wheel alignment as well um, with the new components. So it is straight down the road. The steering feels a little bit heavier, but the whole car just feels newer, more precise, agile, as you would expect from replacing worn uh, suspension components. So that's done. And over the last week or two here, I've actually bought a lot of parts for this car. We've been doing a lot of stuff. So this video has kind of turned into a fall update. So we started off with the oil, right? We moved on from the oil. We did all of the suspension and steering stuff. So that's been nice to have done. The other night, I did the timing chain tensioner. Ender did it, did it on his M5, which has now been sold, as you know. Colt did it on his 540, so I did it on the M5. It's about a $130 part from ECS Tuning. Um, check out their DIY video since they're already done. And the part's located down there. You got to pull off this air filter box here. The mass airflow sensor comes off lower box comes apart it's pretty simple to get to uh well to touch and feel you can't really see it um, there's a 19 millimeter bolt on it pull that out put the timing chain tensioner in yeah there's probably a little bit less chain rattle a little less chain slack it's really just preventative maintenance so that's good to get that done i guess we'll do a little walk around of other things pending when i drove this car to baltimore in may or march excuse me my front bumper was pretty perfect before that Honda Civic in front of me flipped up some piece of metal. No way to avoid it. It did that, it did that, and it did those two little things there. So I ordered some BMW touch-up paint for that. Uh, I know it's not going to make those disappear, but blue would be better than black for one, and two, it will protect, I suppose, the plastic bumper. Coming into the back of the vehicle, when I actually got the car back from, um, from Dave Walter, BMW, I noticed two things were wrong. One, I... Actually, that night, cleaned the interior a little bit. I sat back here, and I looked, and um, one of these, it was actually this one, was stuck open. So I played with it for a little bit, and it's broken. I don't think they broke it. It probably just failed when it was in there. Uh, I have every bit of service history for this car, which is cool. So I've been able to look at that, and the last time they were replaced was under warranty in, like, 2001. So I just went ahead and bought new OEM rear cup holders for an E39. I know I can do the cup holder delete and put the cubby, but uh, if you've seen my quick little DIY video on how to pop that thing in there. You'll understand my reasoning. So that has been fixed and is now accurate in the back of the car. Also, license plate lights. Yeah, who's the user who told me, hey, don't put those crap LED lights in. They will work like two months and then fail. I get the car back, ding, ding, check lick plate lights. The one on the left side over here had failed. Um, so I just bought new ones on eBay for another $25 and uh, put those in. If they only last another two months, then I will probably junk the whole crap LED thing and go back to uh, stock OEM halogens. But for now, the license plate lights are working. There's nothing on the check display. There's no check engine light. There's no lights on the console or on the, on the cluster, which for me is good news. In my trunk, uh, Colt actually found this and emailed it to me thinking it would be funny for an M owner to own this. Well, and I bought it. It was like $11. I would not have paid any more for it. It is this little pouch, supposedly it's a BMW OEM part, I never knew they made this, for a quart of oil. It opens up like such, there's a quart of Castrol 1060, um, and then you also get this little pouch here with the bag for used oil and some makeshift funnels out of cardboard. So being an M car that burns maybe a quart every 500 to 700 miles, why not? 
why not carry around some oil? And it's got Velcro on the back, so it just sticks on the carpet in here. You know, if you're out on a road trip, you need oil, you don't want to pay like $95 at a dealership. There you go. Nice little addition there. Thanks, Colt. I also had this, actually it was the other side, the passenger side rear wheel, I noticed was losing, say, 20 pounds of air per day. These tires are in great shape, so that's not the issue. Um, I actually pulled the wheel, examined the tire. There's nothing in the tread. The tread looks great. Um, the wheel is true on both sides. I didn't see any issues there. So I took it back over to NTB where I had the tire installed whenever ago that was. They took the tire off, looked at it, found corrosion on the wheel, cleaned it, had the car two or three hours, put it back on and didn't charge me a dime for it. So that was pretty cool and my pressure has been perfect since. So over the last several hundred miles we've done quite a bit with this car and of course I've spent more money and that's my fall update. The only thing I have pending right now, parts in the mail, would be that uh, touch-up paint which uh, I'll figure out how to clean the wax off there and uh, apply that. I'm not going for a perfect finish. I'm not buffing it down. This is not a show car by any means. I just want to make it look a little better and protect the surface uh, material of the bumper, I suppose. So I'll probably throw a clip in here at the end of this video, uh, a little before and after of that. But that's my status here. Car's in pretty good shape. I don't have any noises anymore. No creaks, no groans. Steering feels excellent. And unfortunately, it's ready for another Ohio winter. But today today is nice so i will enjoy that last clip of the video i did go ahead and put that touch-up paint on last night bmw color system it's the oem part paint code 425 for silverstone metallic put two or three layers of uh of the actual base coat on and then one layer of clear coat it is far from perfect but it does cover up the spots fairly well they're no longer black so it is an improvement along the back of the car i did touch up one of the pdc sensors actually had no paint on it excuse all the carbon and crap over the back of this i haven't been able to clean it for days that pdc sensor is now blue instead of gray thanks for watching this update video a lot of stuff has happened to this car over the last few months it's never done that's the thing with an enthusiast's car is it's never ever done there's no point when people ask me when are you going to be done with it never there's always something breaking. There's always something to be upgraded. There's always something to be cleaned, enhanced, changed, otherwise bettered. So thanks for watching, guys. Leave me some comments, and uh, we'll talk in a future video. Bye-bye.